Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I got another ever popular trash fish or treasure video for you. So stay tuned. So not only is this a trash fish or a treasure video, it's also a catch, clean, and cook video, which I know you guys also love. I didn't even know you could catch this particular fish on a hook and line, but me and Miss Backwoods went out there offshore yesterday and Check this little bit of footage right here. Alright guys, like 5 a.m. here at fish camp and we've got uh, we've got the boat hooked up we got coolers packed got plenty of dead bait getting ready to pull out we're gonna head to the coast we'll check back in with you we'll get to the boat ramp all right folks we've arrived at the very busy boat ramp here at st augustine florida uh, Looks like the tide's pretty low. Gonna go ahead and grab some live shrimp. And uh, here at the bait shack. We have to get in line here. <laughs> Quite a few people. Look at that sunrise. See, that's worth getting up early for right there. Look at this guys, surprise catch, a lionfish. Check this out guys, freaking lionfish. Well, they want you to keep these though. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I'm gonna take him home and eat his ass, what I'm gonna do with him. That's trash fish or treasure, treasure right there. Trash fish or treasure, lionfish. Look at the sprinkles on that thing. Man, I'm almost afraid to touch him. I know. I didn't know we had them all the way up here. But apparently we do, because there's one right there. St. Augustine, lionfish. Mm, look at this. She broke off again. Broke the hole leader off this time. All right. So, state of Florida wants you to keep these guys. Are those? And they're supposed to be really good eating. Are they? Are so, yeah, I mean, beautiful. Look how pretty he is. I know. Wow. There's no size. Take a picture of them on my phone. There's no size. No, they, these are invasive species. I got one too, so I can't really help you. <laughs> as soon as mine got to the bottom. <sighs> mine ain't pulling no drag puller though, but maybe he's a keeper. Uh, that's a little red. Nope, vermilion. Freaking vermilion, hopefully he's a keeper. <laughs> oh, God damn, I'm not 
I'm glad I'm not fishing against her in a tournament today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another freaking giant one. I think she's just catching the same one that's over and over. Yeah, he just swims right back down there. He bites again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to name him Chuck. All right, Chuck. All right, Chuck. Welcome to the fish cleaning table here. We got our lionfish. Let's check him out a little bit. I know he is an ugly sucker. Oh, he's really pretty when he goes living. But these spines up here on top have got, I don't know if you can see it or not, they're like freaking little needles. And these are actually poisonous also, like a catfish. But instead of having just three barbs on him, this one's got a bunch all the way down his back. Guess that's what keeps him from getting eaten by everything. Other than that, he looks very much like a sea robin. Those fins, side fins. Little cool. Things are almost like sea robin wings. Yeah, I'm, so, I haven't claimed one before, so I'm just going to fillet him. Get him right behind that fin right there. I'll open him up a little bit. Now, I'm going to be very careful with these back fins here. Just kind of open them up very carefully. It's got some really nice white meat. Kind of like a puffer fish. Reminds me of a puffer fish. Alright, here's the filet. A little piece of tail. And just carefully turn him over and do the same thing on the other side. There's two little flays off that guy. Normally I keep a... I can't believe that sucker just moved. I don't know if it just fell one way or another. Did y'all see that? Let's finish these up. Got one little thing there I missed. With the spike on it. A very soft skin. So I'm trying to be careful. It's pretty. Skin is almost like a catfish. Those washed up, and we'll give them a try. So we got our lionfish all nice and cleaned up. I hear these things are delicious. Um, so maybe not so much of a trash fisher treasure. It's not going to be a mystery. We already know that they're going to be pretty good to eat. Just wanted to show you catching that one and how to clean them if you get them. And um, now we're going to do the cooking part, but I'm going to, of course, backwards gourmet style, do it over the top for you guys. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you the ingredients we're going to do and we're going to make some sides. So I'm going to help you out with that too. So we're going to be doing up the lionfish with our typical, what we do with the, our trash fish treasure videos. We're going to season them. We're going to give them some, uh, a, an egg mayo wash and dredge them, give them egg mayo wash, hit them in panko, and then we have already got that old, good old Dutch oven cast iron going over there on a nice fire. 
getting ready. That is got getting hot too. That has got peanut oil inside. Okay, to me, best way to eat fish, fry it. That's how we're doing that one, guy. So then I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to make good old southern hush puppies using your Jiffy corn mix. Yeah, I love this stuff. Everybody loves this stuff. And it's cheap. This is gonna be easy. You need an egg and some milk and a couple other ingredients we're gonna bring in a little bit. And then, let's go down here. I've made some spiral cut russet potatoes and I marinated them things in parsley and salt and I've soaked all the starch out of them so hopefully they'll get nice and crispy. All right, so it's gonna be kind of a curly fries, I hope. We'll see how that starts out, but that's the first thing we're gonna cook. Um, I think maybe, maybe we'll do the hush puppies first. That'd be the second thing we're cooking because that fish is only going to take a second. But there are those beautiful lionfish fillets. Had them buried in the ice. So we'll get to them in a sec. Quick, easy, and delicious hush puppies. Um, Jiffy corn muffin mix. I, somehow I ended up with a vegetarian one. It doesn't have to be that one. We are good old original works just as good. A lime, some garlic. That's about three cloves, some chopped scallions, some milk, an egg, and a little bit of Creole seasoning. Use your favorite. And of course, you're going to need a bowl to mix it all up in. Now, let's get this party started and crack my egg right from our chickens right here on the Backwoods Gourmet Micro Farm. I'm going to go ahead and just give that a quick little bit of a whip. I'm not going to put my milk in yet though. What I am going to do is go ahead and mix some of this seasoning right into the egg. <coughs> i go ahead and put my garlic in. You can make these as garlicky as you want. I like mine kind of garlicky. Three cloves of garlic. Straight in there. Some onions. You can use regular onions. I'm using scallions because that's what I got. And with a little good squeeze of lime juice. Alright, let's go ahead and open up our jiffy here. You ain't got a kitchen knife, eh? Good old pocket knife doubles as a good. Dump that whole pack in there. Alright, this stuff is still the best buy on the market for about less than a dollar so you want to make these pretty pretty dry okay for hush puppies I want to just put just a dash of milk in there I don't want this to be runny trick is that we want to be able to spoon these into that hot grease. We want it to be nice and stiff. That looks pretty good. We're going to let that set about five minutes. Let the baking powder start taking effect. They'll get fluffy and we'll drop them in the hot grease. Uh, while we're waiting on our hush puppy mix there, let's go ahead and make our egg mayo wash. That's one egg right there in the pan equal amount of mayo brand new I'm using the uh, olive oil mayo about one good heaping tablespoon is usually equal to about one large egg let's go ahead and we're gonna whisk that together and it is pretty important that you get this nice and smooth so you're gonna have to work on it just a minute there and a whisk is a must for this operation. Really cuts down the amount of time it takes. All right, that's looking great. Scrape that down the bowl. Should look something like that. I'll go ahead and grab our batter mix by the teaspoon. It's almost like a fritter. 
step smaller. Still a little bit stiff or a little bit runny. That's why they're not staying in balls. And I got my oil about 300. When they all look nice and brown like that, we just turn them a couple times. I'm going to go ahead and bring them out with our spider. Let them drain real good. Let them drain as much as that oil off of them. You can get off of them. So I've kicked the fire up just a bit. Going ahead and bring in over our spiral cut potatoes. I'm going to kind of drop them a little bit at a time. Kind of make little islands with them there. You want to do it slowly because still got a lot of water in them. You don't want it to overflow your pot. I'm getting close to being doing right now. So that's the reason why I wanted to drop them in two little nests make it easier to turn. Alright, it's time for the star of the show. It's going to be our lionfish fillets. Go ahead and dump them in there. I'm going to give them a little bit of seasoning. We're going to season them. I would suggest seasoning them. Season them before you do anything else. I'm going to just give them a little Tony Satries there. Now that they're seasoned, I'm going to dredge them very lightly with just a little bit of all-purpose flour. Just to get that binder layer in there. Alright, you don't need a lot for this amount. No more, use more, but you want them to get completely coated in flour. And if you're doing like I'm doing here today and it gets most of the flour soaked up, you can use the same bowl to go back with our next step. So, what we're going to do now is bring over that egg mayo wash. We're just going to run them guys through that stuff. A good coating on both sides. Hold it up. Let the excess drip off. Well, let's put them both in there first and get them good and coated. Because I need a place to go with them. Alright, let's wipe that up right here, bud. And kind of unprepared with this panko. I didn't even open a can yet. Plain panko. Plain old panko. Just enough to cover them. It's there. Alright. And we'll let them drip off. Actually, the more of this you let stay on there, the more panko is going to stick to them. Lose my product there. I really love this method for cooking fish. I don't always use it, but you know, unless I get something really special like today, sometimes I just throw that thing in some uh, Zatarain's Wonderful, which is my my favorite, by the way. Of if you're you want to know what the Backwoods Gourmet favorite 
uh, out of the store fish breader mix is. It is Zatarain's wonderful. Love this stuff. So I have my fire on medium heat. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay them away from me. I suggest you do that. Lay it away from you in case any grease splashes. It's not gonna come back on you. I remember that oil's only been flavored by that parsley and potatoes and the seasonings that we put in the hush puppies. So I like to put my fish in last. So it's picking up the, all the flavor that's cooked into that oil from the things that you've done prior. My grandmother used to call that seasoning your oil. You don't want to season your potatoes and your hush puppies with fish because the oils in the fish will cook out. You do your fish or shrimp or whatever seafood you're frying last. It looks like that golden brown. Go ahead and drain. Take it off. Fish only takes literally minutes to cook through. And that's going to continue cooking after we take it off. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Um, first of all, I'll show you that Jiffy Corn Mix Hush Puppy. All right. That's fantastic. All right. Just as good as any Hush Puppy at any of your best restaurant you ever been to. And then these these curly fries, I remember I fried them with the uh, with the parsley, and that parsley has become nice and crispy inside there. Oh, boom! Very really crispy. We hear that crunch going on, and that was awesome. I put a little, hit them again, right when they came out of the grease with a little bit of zatarans. Or uh, Tony Satchery's Creole seasoning. I'm really starting to dig this stuff now. Let's go in for the star of the show. So there's our beautifully fried lionfish. That is really, really good. Uh. Mm, 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 mm. Very delicate. It does have a little bit of a fish flavor to it. Um, it's not quite as sweet as like a puffer fish or something like that. But it's very very good almost like snapper um, and I can see why everybody 
these days they're all spear fishing those things but I have never really ever seen anybody catch one on a hook like I did yesterday and cook it up like this so if you like what we're doing please smash that like button right down there you can subscribe to our channel right over here for another great backwoods gourmet video it's gonna be right there and for a whole playlist of trash fish and treasure videos it'll be right over there we'll see you next time